Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and I believe I'm about a day away from an Echo Solution. There's something I have to go pick up, but it should mitigate the problem considerably. Maybe at some point in the future I'll go into a little bit more depth about these things, but instead I decided, since we were talking about the Herald recently, let's talk about CIG's expanding vision for hacking which is something that I am very very excited about because with a system like this it allows for the potential for horizontal game expansion now if you think about a traditional MMO sometimes you know you would go up through levels you know and you go to level 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever and then an expansion comes to a game and then you expand vertically. You become more powerful and then all the content from those previous levels, it largely becomes irrelevant to you as a player. Whereas in a world that's constructed the way that Star Citizen very much appears to be constructed, and I think we can all you know, say it, it is very much that at this point. Um, there's no such thing as leveling. You know, I don't have to learn Fighters 5 or Fighters 4 in order to get to Cruisers 1 and things like that using the EVE Online method or, you know, even like a World of Warcraft method. Oh, I got to get up to level 40 so I can learn this spell or this ability and it ties everything together. In a game that's structured the way Star Citizen is, everything is more or less open to you from the get-go and it just requires you to kind of go and get that thing with the hacking the way it appears that they're going from not so much like the game mechanics of actually hacking which is something that we'll talk about in a, in a little bit but you know with all these different you know this array of chips that they have shown us it looks like they are setting us up for you know, being able to acquire different chips from different sources. Now, we've seen this before. Of course, you know, there was a Rudo's shop at Grim Hex. When we had still had Delamar, there was a shop there that sold hacking chips. And, of course, there are various other shops within the universe that, sh you know, basically sell very basic hacking chips. The widest variety, I think, that you could get was Rudo's shop, of course. But... When you tie all these things together and you remove them from that very basic starting level of what hacking was in so many respects, you may get to a point where the Nine Tails have a certain chip. Our Corp Security has a certain chip. Crusader Security has a certain chip. And certain chips or certain you know decks or boards or whatever you want to call them are good for certain things, certain situations. And so it pays to kind of have a variety of all these things available to you. Now, this is, of course, the the human portable version of hacking. You know, we have the Herald you know, flashing by in the background, but this is, you know, this is the immediate, I am a person on site with a tool belt. These are the tools that are available to me. And of course, much more sophisticated things we will expect with ship to ship hacking and that sort of thing. But what this kind of opens up as a possibility, if you think about having to go to different areas and acquire certain hacks, if they are limited to one-use chips or decks or whatever you want to call them, is that you create a loop of evergreen content in the game. You create a foundation where let's say it is the nine tails chip that you're after well you got to go to the nine tails to get it so you might have to do a few things for the nine tails in order to get that chip but and then that hack should also be sufficiently rewarding that you know the trip to the nine tails you have to do a couple of missions for them They're like okay blah 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 here's your reputation you've now unlocked nine tails chip 2a 3b whatever you want to call it When you kind of develop a game like that and you kind of open things up horizontally rather than vertically, you create this thing where 
there are parts of the world or the world itself is always going to be relevant. Like if you played a lot, a lot of traditional MMOs as I have, you know that as every expansion gets delivered, the previous expansion becomes less and less relevant and then ultimately forgotten. You know, it just becomes something for collectors to chase after and largely it doesn't hold any bearing on the game, which in a way kind of destroys the immersiveness of a lot of these classic MMOs. Is it, you know, like if we use, the, you know, the World of Warcraft example. So apparently for the last decade, nothing has happened in Northrend since Wrath of the Lich King. You know, all these zones in Cataclysm haven't changed since Cataclysm was over. But when you kind of structure your game where you just open things up horizontally and everything that you open up in these different areas remains relevant to the game, you keep those areas, you know, you keep those areas relevant and you keep earning rewards off of the time and effort that you invested in creating that content in the first place. And that's one of the classic failings of a lot of MMOs is that instead of continuously reaping the rewards of those previous expansions, they kind of just let them die off. So the lack of relevancy makes those rewards and makes that investment that the company made in developing that content less and less rewarding over time whereas you know if you use a system where you kind of expand things out horizontally rather than vertically where you would you know in vertical you would attain certain power levels and things below that would quickly become irrelevant whereas horizontally you just open up all kinds of new possibilities and different ways of solving you know the player problem how do i do this mission how do i hack this console things like that well here's a different way to do it here's another way to do it by kind of building it out that way, all this content, all the work that you put in, it remains evergreen. It always yields rewards and it make it keeps the entire universe relevant. And you know, that, that that's one of the sad things about a lot of the classic MMOs is that you, you go to the old capital cities for this expansion or that expansion and you rem you remember what it was when it was current when it was when it was live and now you see it as largely just a dead city or you know a dead mission hub or something like that and it feels a little bit sad because you're you know in the back of your mind you're thinking hold on in the real world you know let's say a big event happens in New York City you know, after that big event is op over, New York City just doesn't fall off the end of the world and everyone just stops going there and forgets it exists. New York continues to be New York. Houston continues to be Houston. Toronto continues to be Toronto. Paris, London, blah, 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 you know? And it kind of, it kind of erodes the, you know, that lore fabric that you're trying to build. Certainly, you know, I was watching these new videos that they put out or this new video that they put out about the, the new Xi'an cargo ship. And we'll be talking about that tomorrow, hopefully with a fix for the echoes in place. But I'm, you know, that looks really, really interesting. And I, you know, that snippet that they put on the end where they're talking about the lore of all the other races where they kind of compressed it all into one thing. My only gripe with that entire video was like, I was just like CIG, you know what? That little end segment, you should have broken that off and put that on the front page of the game. So someone who comes to Star Citizen who is new can click on that video and say the alien races of the Star Citizen universe and get that explanation right up front. You know, it, it's oftentimes, you know, true that, you know, when you have broad games with a lot of lore and a lot of transmedia narrative that to the more you know to the more I don't want to use a, I don't want to use a derogatory word but to the more casual player a lot of the you know a lot of the richness of your work kind of gets lost if it's kind of hidden in these little segments and that should be a video in and of itself in my opinion but I digress anyways you know, I'm very, very interested to see, you know, if it does make it for 315, I'm very, very interested to see what the uh, mini game 
is going to be in the Moby Glass. You know, we've been wanting this for a long, long time. We've talked about this before. I'm very intrigued. You know, I am very, very intrigued to see where this is going to go. This is definitely an area that I was very much interested in the game. And I think it holds a lot of interesting possibilities. So ultimately, this is going to be something that goes from, you know, your personal inventory and it moves on to a ship. And there are going to be ships like the Mercury Star Runner and the Herald that desperately want this gameplay. And so this is going to be a very interesting one to watch. And this could be, as with most careers when they're introduced to Star Citizen, a very lucrative career for those who choose to specialize in it. So maybe <laughs> for a lot of us, Back in 2014, and those of us who've jumped on board since, that Herald investment back in 24, October 31st of 2014, now in 2021, might actually be on the horizon of playing that. Please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channel.